Let me tell you a story, a tale I once heard. Welcome, you are listening to Ladies Who Genre, a podcast book club for ladies and not ladies who like the genre. I'm your host, Morgan. And I'm your other host, Noelle. So this is not going to be a spoiler-free podcast, so if you haven't read the book and you're sensitive to spoilers, go ahead and pause now and come back after you've had a chance to read it. There's a trigger warning for this week's book, which is that someone gets murdered. It's not graphic. They find the person afterwards. You know, it's not gross. So there's like a couple looter marks. There's nothing in here that is not fine for like a young adult on up. Today's specific book that we are discussing is Artemis by Andy Weir, who is, by the way, the person who wrote The Martian. So for those of you who really liked that situation, this would probably be an apt situation for you, although this is far less uh, stressful than The Martian, I think. I would consider The Martian to be a bit more of a adult book, not because it's naughty, just, you know, a a little bit more refined in its explanations and themes, while this one definitely has a little bit more of a YA feel. Yeah. So if you are expecting exactly the same level of complexity, I've seen some people who are a little bit disappointed, but I love both for what that's worth. Oh, that's interesting. I was not disappointed by this book in any way. Yeah, no, I thought it was totally fun, but I don't know. Apparently, a lot of people were expecting a, a new Martian Oh, uh uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't understand that. It's like sophomore slump or whatever people say. I don't know. I thought this was great. I haven't actually read The Martian, though. I just watched the movie. I really liked it. The problem for me with The Martian is, again, Will Wheaton. Not something I want to listen to. So (laughs) I might read the book, though, because I hear it's really good. I super enjoyed it. Although I I did feel like the audiobook adaptation was great just because the style of the book, the main character... This doesn't have anything to do with this book, but whatever. I don't care. (laughs) So the style of the book is a character who is stuck elsewhere and he's leaving like audio logs Uh uh-huh and so the fact that you're listening to his audio logs yeah like it it translates super well okay in a way that i feel most audiobooks don't like they can't okay but also you do you i understand you don't want to listen to that maybe i'll just uh get over it for one book and i'll just put a band (laughs) back on will we and after that i mean i survived ready player one it was fine yeah all right so uh do we want to get into our drinks yet yeah what are you drinking I'm drinking just plain old beer, just which beer. I, I love that in the book, they, they talk about how like, yeah, we got beer. We don't worry about what like brand it is. That's not an issue. It's just, it's beer. It's fine. And it's I'm like, just oh, beer. all right. Which is kind of how I feel about beer. Oh, I really don't feel that way about beer. Interesting. I am doing a similar thing, but in the normal way of our relationship here, I'm going more hardcore and I'm going straight bathtub gin because... They have some booze on this on this situation here, this moon base that we are on, and it is all garbage. And straight up bath- bathtub gin is also garbage. So <laughs> it is what I would expect to drink should I ask for hard alcohol on Artemis. I did appreciate that they were going into this whole issue of trying to ship things from Earth to the moon, which, by the way, book takes place on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> in case you you know you, you haven't actually read it yet and you don't know that so it, they're still spacey so like andy weir did provide space yeah yeah it's still yeah. like it's not like medieval england <laughs> you know it, it not, would have been not amazing <laughs> <laughs> but you know i i thought it was really interesting some of the different like taxes and stuff that he goes to anyways but ignoring that we need to we need to we need to get into the thing first <laughs> Or not. I don't know. Or not. How are Maybe you? We don't. How are you? Who are you? Who are, who are, who are you up to? I'm not sure who I am anymore. I've been in this <laughs> house for so dang long. <laughs> I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I am doing pretty dang good. The moving saga continues. It is not done. It's never done. I don't think I'm ever going to be finished. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But still, despite that, pretty dang good. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Morgan's in a house full of people right now. So if you hear some noises, it's just Morgan Yeah, there the might house. be a D&D group happening uh, well, not like a group, but like a D&D session yeah, happening yeah. A, a couple doors down. So, Wait, did you, know? you choose us over D&D? Oh, I'm not in that game. Oh, okay. I thought yeah, I was about so, to be no, super clear. honored, but now, now I'm not. <laughs> Morgan had nothing to do anyway. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. Shall we uh, opening line of the book here? Yeah, let's open us up. I bounded over the gray, dusty terrain towards the huge dome of Conrad Bubble. Conrad Bubble. Conrad Bubble. That's another I, thing. I like that they name the sections. I love that they call them bubbles. That makes me think of like tiny bubbles on the moon. 
makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that the character literally describes them as boob-shaped bubbles. Yeah, they're, they which do. Which <laughs> is just particularly delightful. Yeah. Yeah. The narrator, by the way, is Rosario Dawson. And you guys know how I trash narrators all the time. I will not trash Rosario Dawson. I, I freaking love Rosario Dawson just as a human, as an actress, and now as a as a audiobook reader. Yeah, I went and looked her up because I was curious. I hadn't done so before listening to the book. And yeah, she's she's in a bunch of things that I realized. Like once I saw her picture, I was like, oh, I do know who that is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, she's night nurse. In, uh, like MIB, Men in Black mm-hmm. 2. And like th- there's a couple things that I feel like I recognize her from. So that's that's really cool. In the Marvel Universe, she's night nurse. And I am here for that. Like Noise. Yeah, she's great. So shall we dive into this book a little bit? Yeah. Anything that you just want to immediately open up with to complain about, to gush over? (laughs) I just love this book. I thought it was really great. There's only one thing in this book that I did not care for. And the rest of this book, I thought was great. Like, I'm ready for stars right now because I can give you all my star readings. Like, I'm here. I liked it. Everyone everyone read this. I haven't done this in so long. Usually I am griping. (laughs) Well, just out of curiosity, what is is your one gripe about our moon girl? When you get towards the end of the book... There is a situation that arises where she needs some assistance and there is a dude who she is used to be best friends with who stole her boyfriend because turns out her boyfriend's gay. That's another thing I really liked about this book. They just like slide in stuff like her boyfriend was gay. So she dumped. So he dumped her and went for her best friend who was a dude. Anyway, the gripe is that the dude ends up blackmailing her into being friends with him again in order to give her the assistance she needs to like save the entire colony on the moon or else everyone's gonna die and i am like f you dude like that was rude like you don't blackmail people into being friends with you i thought that was crappy yeah i mean i my hope being someone who has a very limited view into these people and their lives via you know this book that takes place over the course of a week or less like it's it's a pretty small slice of their life right yeah well i guess it, it whatever point being you know how sometimes friends pay play jokes on each other and i'm like ooh, yeah if someone did that to me i would be so incredibly hurt or pissed or whatever but i can recognize that other friendships have their own nuances for like what's okay with them uh-huh. so there's part of me that wonders like is that is that something that made sense for their relationship? I, does that does any of what I'm saying make some sort of sense? Totally makes sense, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm still mad about it. <laughs> uh, I just thought it was a dick move. It, it, like the thing about that is that this has nothing to do with writing. This has nothing to do with this book, really, other than like I thought it was a dick move of that character to do. It's not like I'm even mad at the author for doing this. I'm <laughs> mad at that character. So that's like the level of BS griping that I have to do about this. Is this one little thing about this book pissed me off? But everything else about it, I was like, yes, I am here for this. How about nice, you? Nice, nice. I, the only thing that I was not a huge, huge fan of was. How do I explain this? It felt a little bit like when she was talking to that one head of everything lady on the moon. I'm forgetting mm-hmm. her name right now. But she she's trying to express, you know, her thoughts about this whole like scheme that she's discovered. Yeah. And the the lady is just kind of like, "Yes, you've discovered our plan. Let me <laughs> fill you in on the details." It it feels a little bit like bad guy reveal. Yeah. In a bad like bond movie or you, like you the, get scooby, what I mean? the scooby gang unmasked her and she was like i would have gotten away with it too yeah except <laughs> yeah. she is like no but this still needs to happen yeah we which still I, do this. I guess is maybe the subversion of the trope but yeah i don't know it just it felt a little too Easy. scooby-doo mm-hmm. bond villain-esque yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i'll agree with that yeah but otherwise so, shall we enjoy. tell them what this book is about <laughs> no girl on the moon that's what you get <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's this colony on the moon called <laughs> Artemis. This girl, Jazz, Jasmine Bashira. Uh, the other, okay, here's another thing I really like about it. She comes from a Muslim family. She's not really Muslim. Like, her dad is super devout and she's not. And I'm like, this is real. Like, that is one of the things I really liked about that. Like, this is, I can understand, this feels like a real human whose family comes from Muslim roots and we're all awesome with that. Mm-hmm. And then she is not one really i mean she's she she says she's she no an longer practicing she's yeah, no longer absolutely. practicing so like and i'm just like this is how things are sometimes and like that's great and they just that's part of her life and that's part of like the the wholeness of these characters is they have religion and they have 
things in their, their background and they're just brought in like people being gay and people being Muslim and people being all sorts of other things, which is just fantastic, like from an inclusion standpoint. Yeah, it didn't feel like we had an entire society of all people who are exactly the same. It's very clear that because this is a an imported city, if that makes sense, like literally, yeah. no no one is born on the moon. That's not right. how life works. You can't so, be, I think. There's something about yeah, it. Yeah, I think they actually go into that a bit as well. But point being that like there isn't a native population. So everyone is brought in from kind of all over the world. Yeah. And they make it clear that that's exactly what happens. Yeah. Is that people are totally brought in from all over. So that's it's really cool how diverse of a yeah cast i guess <laughs> there and is. it was like created by was it kenya is that right like the kenyan government set this up it the girl who's right. the girl who's in charge of it is like from an african country and so the african country is the one that built the moon base and i'm like yes finally we get like other continents involved in this like moon race thing that like we've been you know there's like eight major players in the moon situation or in the you know space race kind of situation mm -hmm. finally this is awesome and we're, we're bringing this i just thought that was really cool anyway i did I, oh. I thought the reason why was also kind of fun where she basically said yeah all the other states like the u.s and uh china russia all these other places have so much bureaucracy mm -hmm. twisted up into their like the the politics of space race and what have you and essentially another country is like man i ain't got no regulations yeah i can do whatever i want i'm just gonna build this thing and you're like yes so it was fantastic anyway so uh she is uh, estranged from her father because she's a smuggler she she smuggles stuff up she has a, a pen pal um who's name is kelvin and he is also in kenya and she has him ship stuff to her that is contraband in artemis and uh distributes it amongst the people but she's kind of like a, a robin hood level smuggler in which she will smuggle in stuff that's like low level stupid like you know having a lighter or some cigars or something like that on the moon but she doesn't smuggle in all the stuff that's like hardcore and she's like pushed out all the competition for smuggling because she has mm. such a good connection because the the guy that she's pen pals with is the guy who loads the freight on the thing and so she smuggles it out when as soon as she gets it because she's also a delivery person who unloads freight so this is fantastic for her and it's funny because they've actually known each other since they were kids and they didn't really plan their jobs to be this way it just kind mm. of worked out that it worked out for them but yeah. she she smuggles stuff in and she doesn't she she keeps out like the really hardcore stuff which i thought was kind of awesome like she does have a conscience about it yeah no completely and i i love how the author revealed this to us yeah. like because the the letters they'll show you little bits of the letters that they're writing to each other throughout mm -hmm. their childhood and that as they get older and they clearly remain pen pals they talk about oh that did you ask that girl that you have a crush on at, like mm -hmm. little teenage like kid stuff then teenage stuff because at first it's like do you like dinosaurs yeah <laughs> <laughs> or something similarly yeah. Yeah. simple and cute but i i love that we kind of get to see them grow up a little bit throughout uh -huh. the book and suddenly you kind of find out as you go along that like oh oh the whole way that she's able to make the smuggling work is because this friend. Yeah. I love that we get that reveal. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, great. this makes sense. Like, that's cool. It kind of, though, now that you said that thing about the Martian where you're hearing the story coming through logs, it's kind of the same way. You get, a, mm -hmm. like, all of their backstory through fun pen pal letters to each other in kind of a similar way. Anyway, so she's a smuggler. She has a guy that she regularly delivers a box of cigars to and maybe does some other like low level smuggling for. He calls her mm -hmm. up and asks her to sabotage these things that are out on the moon. Har they're called harvesters and they are harvesting a certain element and that is used to make aluminum which has the byproduct, the, the aluminum smelting process has the byproduct of making oxygen and guess what is awesome on the moon? having oxygen so he is this guy calls her in to sabotage this other company because he wants to take over the smelting thing and make the oxygen because mm -hmm. the people who do the smelting and making the oxygen have a contract to do that and in return they don't have to pay like they get unlimited energy and so he has some yeah. other scheme he wants to go through so he sends her out to do this and this is like the, the big like plot point of this book is her going out on this mission to to do this and then it not going right there is something very fun about this book having a almost like a bank heist feel yes but it's to break down 
digging robots. Yes, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and it and twice they have two heists in this in this book. Yeah, and so because they have they get into trouble, and then she goes, "Oh crap!" She get kind of gets caught, and then she has to have another. Oh, then she meets the head of the 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 city, and this the head of the city is like, "No, I actually need you to do that thing because the people who own." the smelting are like super bad guys from Brazil and blah, blah, blah. And we actually need them to get out because they're going to try to take over blah, blah, blah. And so sends her out to do even more destructive things. So mm. there are, there are two heists involved, which is, is kind of crazy. But like when we got through the first heist, I was like, dude, there's still like four more hours of this book. Where is this? Even? And then I'm like, Oh, we're getting another one. Double heist. Double which heist. I feel like most good, like, robbing heisty movies yeah really are multiple yeah. stages of getting shit done so yeah. that's i don't know it, it fits within the genre yeah if you like oceans 11 this is the book for you it was just very fun like i don't remember any point in the book feeling bored or like yeah, no. eh, i'm not into this i'm mm -hmm. gonna put it down like no it's i felt it was really engaging the whole way through yeah i really liked it rosario did a great job of like embodying the character they describe different parts of the colony on the moon and how they work and how they're connected to each other and how you can get around and there is like a visitor center um for visitors to come visit the moon and go to the apollo landing site and all that kind of stuff so like they go into detail about a lot of the like world in this which you know i love world building and i think that that is like the coolest and most fun part of any book is like when you get to explore the world and they really like walk around this world a lot which i find really interesting for a space that's relatively limited given that you know you can't just keep going at some point you hit walls to yeah. this little city but they talk a bit about like the fancy tourist areas and how even the construction is different in those areas mm -hmm. versus the deeper levels and how because of like both economic and structural reasons you know there's just lots of little changes to who gets what it's really interestingly thought out i also really love the stuff about her dad so she's estranged from her dad and the whole book you are listening to her she's poor she's like super poor but she does have her own space but she doesn't have like her own bathroom or anything she really just wants a bathroom <laughs> but she's saving every penny she's got and you don't really know why but she has an exact dollar figure of what she needs and you find out towards the end of the book that she did something when she was younger that was stupid and like burnt down her dad's studio because he's a welder and she's felt bad about it for her whole life basically and so she was saving up money her whole life to just buy him another studio and set him up again to be like have a shop the way that that the, to match the one that she burned down which i just thought was like super sweet like all she wanted in this world was to make something up to her dad in fact she took this like sabotage gig like against her better judgment because she didn't want to do that she took it because the amount of money that she was because she was going to get a million clams i don't know what the word was anymore but like <laughs> <laughs> a million bucks whatever um in order to to go ahead and and do this heist and so she when she heard that number she was like well i have to do this now because a I need to replace my dad's stuff. Like that's a thing. And also I could I could get a toilet. That would be so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, when you get enough space clams, you got to use them. Yeah. So she's she's like weirdly moral about everything, which I kind of like. Like these characters are not one dimensional for the most part. I mean, there are definitely characters that are one dimensional, but like the main ones are pretty awesome. Yeah. She definitely has that kind of thief with a heart of gold mm -hmm. vibe going. Yeah. And she has her, even her friends like Sabota. So she's got this like tech wizard who will like, I think he's in love with her and basically will do like anything that she asks him to do. But he's really, really smart. Did you get like Russia vibes off of him? Maybe. Uh, I'm trying to remember what his last name was. His last I, name I, is Sabota. Oh, no, no, no. Martin was first name. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. For some reason. Everyone's referred to as their last name. That's fair. Yeah. When you listen to things in audio, I'm looking at a a written list. Uh huh. That is the one downside with audiobooks. Uh huh. Yeah. Because I'm like, that name sounds familiar. Uh huh. But I'm not oh, seeing it. It like, says he's Ukrainian. Look at me. I wrote this list. <laughs> and I'm like, did you get Russian vibes? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, the, the Ukraine is definitely not Russia, but it is Russia adjacent. So, yeah. So he's this Russian dude who's like a scientist and he's really smart and he, he ends up like, he always wants money from her and he wants her to smuggle stuff, but more so he just wants to kind of be her pal. And so he ends up like having a heart of gold too. Like, I just love him. Like a lot of the guys in this book are even the guy who like blackmails her just wants to be her buddy. They are all actually just really nice people. 
I could appreciate. I like that there is like, well, I was gonna say there's not really a bad guy. I guess all the like the mobsters trying to take over the moon, the, bil- like, I the guess billions of Brazilians. Are, yeah, yeah, those are the 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 actual like bad guys, bad guys. But yeah. n- none of the named characters, I guess. Yeah, uh, there's like one assassin Alvarez, maybe yeah. trying to sneak around and do some stuff, but. Uh-huh. I appreciate that everyone has a lot of their own motives for mm-hmm. why they're doing whatever they're doing. And it just, it feels very balanced. Yeah. And very like everyone's a little bit gray, which is good. I like people who are gray because real people are gray. It's like why I don't like Superman. I think Superman's super, super boring. Also, OK, <laughs> we're going to get some hate comments. Captain America is really boring. <clears throat> Sorry. Team I Tony. don't disagree. Team Tony Stark. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I really like gray characters who have like they don't always do the right thing and they do sometimes they do the wrong thing for the right reason and sometimes they do the right thing for the wrong reason so i find that really interesting and this book had a lot of that which i was really into i I wouldn't yeah i wouldn't say it's actually ya but it is like pretty borderline i would consider it like elder ya yeah it doesn't feel super sophisticated but it's just mature enough that yeah i wouldn't give it to your 10 year old but like you know, 16, 17? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. All right. Do you have favorite characters? Oh, I mean, Jasmine herself is pretty dang sweet. I know that. Uh, so, hmm, favorites. favorites. <laughs> favorites. I hope you leave this all in. <laughs> <laughs> Me pondering. Yeah, no, I'm going to go ahead and go with our main character. Like, I know it's not exactly a, a risky choice, but she's fun. I appreciate her thinking into things but also sometimes acting impulsively it but it all feels very believable to me for someone who's gosh what is she like 18 19 she's Uh, not very old right like early 20s but yeah yeah but she i don't know i can believe it i guess is where it fits for me and i like that yeah i usually hate main characters like that is a thing with me uh specifically on tv shows i really hate main characters like i buffy is my least favorite of that crew like all of the main titled characters i usually am like nope uh, this is one instance in which I'm like, no, I like her. I would like to hang out with her. I think she'd be a cool friend. Like, I'm into her, and I'm actually into all of her friends too. Like, they're all pretty cool. I'm, I'm with you there. What about like, nice. what about places anywhere on the station you want to go? I mean, I feel like to some extent, the station. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always into space travel and things. So I'm all about like, I would like to see the whole thing. Show yeah. me that visitor center. Show me their little touristy thing the bubbles Mm -hmm. that they use to like travel around so you can get a hamster ball basically and and bounce around outside the station like it's crazy like i i want that i want that experience i want to do that too yeah like that sounds fantastic because the setting is so small i'm kind of like yeah the whole setting that's where i want to go I specifically want to go to the gift shop. I love me a good gift shop. Like I learned from my mama to to go. She, my mom is crazy. She went to the Louvre, went to the gift shop, and then left. And I'm like, I can hang out here for a little while, okay? <laughs> she also did it at the Eiffel Tower. She went to the gift shop, got some Eiffel Tower keychains for her friends, and I'm like, I'm gonna go to the top. I'll be back. <laughs> Seems silly. Anyway, but I, d- I do like a good gift shop, let me tell you that. And they they specifically stop and talk about the gift shop on the station. And I'm like, I'm here for that. I want to I wanna go to this gift shop. It sounds like fun. Yeah, I do love that. Like, they're, they specifically call out that we have a tourism industry. Yep. In fact, to some extent, that is their main industry. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, at least the most public facing industry. Yeah. They, she does talk in, about how there's other things at play, which is, in fact, the whole reason that these mobsters want to take over the moon there's a super fancy cable that's happening anyways but whatever i uh, something else that i love about this is the sciency explaining yes love it (laughs) and i and i i use those weird vague terms because i i am not someone who has a particularly strong science background so i appreciate that there's little explanations just tossed in they talk about the boiling point of water how that's different in the moon's atmosphere Mm -hmm. And that affects like how hot they heat up their drinks. They talk about how welding is different because of the type of gases that are in the air on the surface as opposed to, you know, in human breathable air. Like just all these little things. I thought that was super cool and super accessible, if that makes sense. Yeah. Someone who just doesn't already know these things. I mean, they talked about the aluminum smelting to get oxygen. And they also talked about the water reclamation system and how like you don't want to think about that too hard. (laughs) 
so yeah, I'm, th that was really great. This book is is really good at um, taking science and making it yeah accessible. Is a great word for that. I think so. So, are there any scenes that you found the most interesting? Mm -hmm. I'll go first. I was riveted when she went out to destroy those things. She had to do this whole process of like bouncing across the moon in order to get to these uh, harvesters that are out there. And then she had to like mount them like and do all this stuff to them and whatever. And then she gets stuck and she doesn't know if she's going to be able to get back in time. And like there's all this drama. And like but when she was like, I don't know why, but I'm like, OK, you're in a station. Everything is fine. But like she went outside the station. <laughs> I was Just, like, that's the wilderness. It sounds terrifying. The dangers are. There's wolves out there. Um, I was, I was. Space uh, wolves. Yeah, space wolves. I was riveted to that scene. I was just like, what is even happening here? Like, you should not go outside the space station. And although she was training to take visitors outside the space station, and I would totally go outside the space station. So I think that my favorite scene is probably the first, the first scene slash like the first chapter. I, I do really like the setup of this. Yeah. Because she's like taking a test. To, so that she can do touristy stuff on the moon and she ends up failing but they make it very dramatic and interesting and you're like immediately you're plunged into what this character is where she is how dangerous it can be like that was cool yeah. uh, like writing wise i i appreciated our introduction to this character and also how boring it is in some ways like they went through her daily grind like they tell yeah. you all this scary stuff and then they're like she gets up, she goes to the other outside bathroom, she brushes her teeth, she does all that. Like, you're just like, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, they make it scary and also mundane, which is like a true fact of life. Like, we do stuff that's like actually terrifying every day. Like, I mean, I can used to commute to work for like an hour and a half and I saw people just die every day. It never occurred to me like, oh, <laughs> oh, you know, that's actually yeah, a terrifying. Yeah, yeah. I'm putting myself in a lot of danger by doing this every day. So we um, like mentally can block that kind of stuff out. And she clearly has, which I like. I appreciated that perspective into her life. All right. Anybody interesting you would want to sit down and have tea with? I, I kind of actually want to talk with that one, um, the wealthy businessman guy, the one who was wanting to smuggle cigars in oh uh-huh yeah like i feel like talking with him or or his daughter although i feel like like i feel like she would know a surprising amount but i think that he would be cool to talk to like tron tell me your life story sir yeah <laughs> how did you get to this point yeah i mean i feel like the woman who invented well i mean who invented this not she didn't invent the space station but she like got the thing together and she uh, it's really funny because she's actually an economist and that's what led her to do all of this was she was studying the economy and was like wait a minute we could build the economy of Kenya and also we we can just make rules up for this or not have any rules. It's fantastic. So like she's really smart and also she does not seem to have any morals at all, <laughs> which I'm just like, that's fascinating. How is that? I want to know what that's She like. definitely has like a here's what's best for the good of all yeah. kind of vibe going, even if it means squashing a few, like yeah. if she Mackie took Beller. the train test. Mm-hmm. She would do the thing where you convert it to kill one person. Yeah. Be like, yep, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> she gives me that vibe for sure. She also, hang on, I had a point. I'm going to get there. Sharpen. Nope. Lost it. Enhance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sharpen, enhance. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. I feel like she also talks a lot about the life cycle of economies and of societies and civilizations and she basically laid it out that she's gonna she made this moon colony or whatever and it's gonna grow and it's gonna be awesome and it's gonna be huge and then there's gonna be problems and then it's gonna die and then we'll start yeah. over like she she was just like this is reality and i was like damn girl that's cold and it's totally true i like how she describes it almost like an organism yeah you like, know yeah, this is a living thing and it's going to have this predictable set of things that will happen to it it was just an interesting way to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, as a politics major, I definitely learned this cycle also because like a lot of politics is having this major is like learning about political histories of civilizations throughout the world and you start seeing patterns. Some take longer to do their life cycle than others, but she's not wrong. Do you feel like we had any big twists? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I guess the twist of her knowing that there's this whole plot going on was kind of thing. I guess I also didn't expect the businessman to die like one scene after we met him oh yeah right yeah. like mm -hmm. that was pretty immediate 
Yeah, I'm, I I found the thing with her dad actually to be a twist too. Like you, the whole time she's trying to earn this money and you're like, why? Why? And then you find out that it's just because she's a giant snuggly teddy bear and you're like, oh my God, I did not expect that. <laughs> I thought you wanted to buy an apartment. Now I'm going to cry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was touching. I like Yeah, no, I agree. Things, yeah. yeah. I like that in the end, a lot of characters did have positive motivations. Yep. Even if they were maybe not necessarily using positive ways to get there. Yep. It was it was interesting. It makes for interesting people. Yeah. And then the, the bad guys were also like, they weren't even, they're not from the station. They are on the station and they're kind of like known enemies. And they don't, those are one dimensional characters that are just bad guys. So you can just go ahead and hate them mm-hmm. and like know that they're bad guys and you don't have to think about their morality at all. It's fantastic. I like that. <laughs> I don't like it when, I mean, actually I love bad guys that are gray. Like I, I'm oh well, you want some more hate mail? I'm a se- <laughs> I'm I'm a secret thinker that Thanos had a point. And so <laughs> it's not so secret now. Don't I think you want to wrap out it the wrong way, but I think I think there was a point somewhere in there. So mm. I do love those kind of characters. But I also in a book like this really like just being handed bad guys that aren't someone I have to know or think about and I can just like identify them with an exclamation point floating over their head through the whole thing and see, you know this, this is low and red Those yeah are the bad guys <laughs> yeah these are the bad guys <laughs> if you need to shoot shoot at this so yeah I like that yeah there's something kind of nice and easy mentally for that yeah all right you ready to rate this thing yeah let's go what is your rating I think I'm gonna go four four okay hi not perfect you know mm-hmm. good yeah, I'm going 4.78. Nice. Which is a high, I think the highest score I might have been, I might have given. This. Was might be. I, I feel like you had one that was a five. Oh, I wonder what that we, was. We don't have a list of these. I don't yeah. know. We don't, we're we really bad at this. We should keep a list and also all of the things that we've drunk because I think that would be interesting. We could, yeah. we could do a year retrospective on all the booze we had. <laughs> Mine will be a lot of like beer and ginger beer. Yeah. Mine will be like a I've lot of ho- hard alcohol. <laughs> All right. Is this worth a reread? Yes, I think so. I think that you definitely are revealed information as you go along that would make rereading it a second time over interesting as you go. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I think it's totally worth it. Absolutely. I will mention here that the script is being written for the major motion picture. Nice. So I would probably reread it right before that. I think that'd be interesting. Yeah. Would you recommend this to a friend? Yeah. Like, it's weird. I So I read some reviews afterward, and there was a lot of negative ones where they were expecting another Martian, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Even though I read the Martian, I still also found this enjoyable. Like, it's different. It's not the same book. But I don't know. I would say yes, because I really enjoyed it. Yeah. But maybe maybe don't tell them that, like, hey, if you love the Martian, you'll love this, too, because apparently that's not true. Oh, you should cut that part out of the beginning of this, then, um, where I was like, hey, this is by the same guy who wrote the Martian. Um, <laughs> I mean, I loved both. Yeah. So, like, I yeah. hold that opinion to be true. Yeah. I'm just saying, apparently some other people didn't. Yeah, that's but, you interesting. Know, I, fre- I would still recommend it. I frequently don't go through and read other people's reviews because I don't care. <laughs> I'm curious. Yeah. I'm very curious. Uh, if there are other books in this series, would you want to read them? I think so. I'm struggling to think, like, because this definitely felt like a one and done book, which yeah. I actually really appreciate. So yes. many of the books we read are the beginning of a series. Mm-hmm. So it was actually kind of nice to have one where, like, no, it, it doesn't feel like there's more story to tell. Yeah. But I don't, sure. I liked the two books by this author that I've read so far. So if there were more, like, set in the same universe, yep. like, more space stuff, yeah, I'd go for it. I have really good news for you. Uh, yes <laughs> there's another book coming out by this guy this year not same characters at all totally different story but it is space related which i'm just like <laughs> perfect <laughs> i'm here let's do it i like that he has a theme i'm into that yeah i mean he, he does what he knows all right uh reader rating uh five yeah i i, I thought the reader was great yeah i would also give her a five i would i would actually give her a six can i add a, a magic six a magic six like and for nice. me to give someone a six is like a big deal guys because i'm real picky about my my readers like i i am such a reader snob and a reader will make me hate a book i will stop giving the book a chance so <laughs> yeah uh hey are you ready for a speed round yeah speed me if this book were a color what color would it be and why black like the depths of space Ooh, okay i was gonna go with silver like the. Ro- i think that's a good call too because yeah. the boobs are probably yeah. silver yeah that's what i was thinking all right 
<laughs> if you could go live in Artemis, would you want to? Ooh, I think so. I think like the only thing that I'm kind of feels like it would be unfortunate is that the internet I know is not yeah, great. There's a major lag. But if if I was able to, you know, kind of think about something I wanted to do up there that be all fulfilling, like friends there, stuff there. I feel like if I could have this life, but like on the you moon. You could be a moon, a moon tuber. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would great. be a moon tuber. That'd be fun. Like, I wonder if sewing in space is more difficult. Huh. I'll have to think about that. I wonder. No, your fabric. I was going to say, does your fabric float around? But like, no, no, no. There's the gravity is less, but not. Yeah, not zero. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. No, it, in fact, I bet you quilting would be even easier. Oh, yeah. Quilting would be way easier. If you started a smuggling operation on Artemis, what would you smuggle and why? I think I would smuggle... <laughs> the first thing that came to mind was porn, but I'm like, I'm sure they have porn. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, the internet imagine- lag sucks, so maybe it is better. <laughs> yeah. And I think she does talk about smuggling exactly yeah. that, probably for that exact reason. So, I mean, that's a good call. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I smuggle YouTube videos. Okay. Like downloaded copies because internet sucks so bad. Yeah. I, I think I'd probably smuggle good alcohol. I mean, similar but different clientele, yeah. you know? Or like weed or something, like just like chill kind of stuff. But you're really not supposed to have fire on the moon and there's like pure oxygen. And yeah, blah, but blah, you blah. could do edibles. Yeah, okay, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I would, yeah. Have, I would have your your general inebriation handled, <laughs> I think. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you could change any one thing about this book, what would it be? Part of me does want that one scene to go a little bit differently, but I can't express exactly how. And I feel like it's mm-hmm. unfair to say it should be different, but I don't know how or why. Like, okay. you know what I mean? So yep. I'm going to mm-hmm. go ahead and go with no. I can't okay. give a specific change. You? Uh, No, I I love this book. I thought it was great. So yeah, I, I would like it to be longer so I could have more of it. <laughs> it. All right. Three words to describe this book and you cannot use magic. Although it was magical, like kind of. It, it was. <laughs> yeah. Space welding smuggler. Yeah. Good, good, good solid. Yeah. There. All right. We have homework for you guys. I would like you to go ahead and write this book on your purchase platform. If you have read it, it will help Andy Weir out. Uh, if you would like to rate this podcast on your listening platform because it helps us out and it makes other people want to listen to our chatter. Follow us on Instagram at ladies who genre all one word. And I did just put up the next few books that we are going to be reading in. They are in the stories section for you. If you guys are interested in reading ahead a little bit and we will see you next time. So I told Bye. You story, a tale.